Being Fiber Mom, a blog all about learning how to thrive the family life while living with fibromyalgia. I am the host of this weekly show called Fiber Live, where we discuss the latest fibromyalgia news, research, and other hot topics. And this is my co-host, Donna. She is the writer and creator at fedupwithfatigue.com. Hi, Donna. Hey, Brandy. How are you? So, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, so this topic is appropriate for you today. <laughs> it is. Uh, Donna and I were talking last week, and we said, you know, that time of the year of getting sick all over again is approaching, and maybe we should do a show this week about um, being sick and battling a chronic illness. And then yesterday, I ended up feeling extremely fatigued, not doing well at all. And then I started running a fever last night and this morning. And now it seems like I have the flu, maybe. I mean, it's really, when you have fibro, it's really hard to determine when you're really sick and when it's just a flare up. Do you have that? Yeah, yeah, some, somewhat. Um, and I, I was actually going to ask the, um, the viewers a question because I have noticed something that when I get, when I get sick now. Um, I'm wondering, do, do their fibro symptoms abate? Do they, do they not have as many fibro symptoms when they get sick with a cold? Um, That's an interesting I, question. I, I notice that when I get a, when I get a cold, um, the cold like completely takes over and then, um, like the, the muscle pain and that kind of thing that I usually have a lot of it, it just, it just lets off. I don't really feel it. So I'm wondering yeah. if anyone else has that experience. Yeah, that's good to know because I know right now um, all the fatigue is taking the front seat and the pain, like the pain in my back, it's all taking a back seat to this fatigue because the fatigue, I can feel it from my head all the way to my toes. I feel like I could literally melt into my mattress right now because I'm so tired. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a really, really, really bad cold a couple of years ago and I actually asked the uh asked my doctor about it because I said, you know what's so weird? I like I, I'm I'm miserable with this cold, but I don't really feel my usual fibro lime stuff. And she had she had no clue. I, I'm suspecting maybe it has something to do with the immune system. Uh, you know, because if your your immune system is busy fighting the the cold or the flu, then it's not fighting you and making you miserable. <laughs> so but if I have no scientific evidence for that, I just wondered if that was like something that other people had experienced. Yeah, I see that. Um, Carrie said that she's had the flu over Christmas and New Year, and she also has fibro. And I'm wondering, Carrie, if, you know, how did how did your flare, your fibro flare, you know, did all those symptoms take a back seat like Donna was asking or, you know, what happened? Um, I know I have a friend that has Emmy, and she says that when she was pregnant with her son, all of her ME symptoms totally took a back seat. She said she loved being pregnant because she felt her normal. Like she didn't have all that, those normal symptoms. So that's a really interesting question. If the, the flare, you know, cause right now it's like I'm on that borderline where do I have the flu or do I have a flare because we have really bad, bad weather. So it's like really hard to determine if I didn't have the fever, I wouldn't even consider flu, but because I have a low fever, that's the only reason I'm, I'm guessing flu. Mm -hmm. Um, so one of the other things that, you know, I wanted to talk about and Donna and I were discussing it was Tamiflu for the flu. You know, should you take it or should you not? Um, Donna, you did a little research on that about Tamiflu, didn't you? Yeah. So I, I read up on a couple of articles because I, I've never taken Tamiflu. So I don't I don't have the experience of what that is like. So I was trying to figure out, well, who's who is that recommended for? And um, so what the what the articles that I read, what they say is that um, people in certain populations are recommended to get Tamiflu, but if you are just a, a regular, normal human being, they say, you know, it's only gonna, I think it only reduces the flu by a few hours. So, you know, if you're gonna get better, better anyway, then basically the, the idea is why bother? Um, but there were some, some categories that they said to, um, that definitely wanted to, to take Tamiflu if they fall into these categories. I'm just gonna read these off. Um, they're recommending anyone um, over the age of 65, uh, kids ages five and under, and they specify particularly those that are like two years old and under, uh, pregnant women and those who have recently delivered uh, babies within the last couple of weeks, I think is what they said. 
Um, those who live in nursing homes, those with uh, respiratory conditions like asthma or COPD or that kind of thing. And then there was another article that mentioned people who have um, compromised immune systems. That might be um, someone who would want to get it as well. And mainly, I think they are giving it in order to try to head off other infections, like more complications. Um, so, but, uh, but you and I were talking about, and I'd be interested to hear, you know, those who have tried Tamiflu, you know, how did that, how did that affect them? Like, because people with fibro are notoriously um, sensitive to medications. And so I'm wondering if, if people, if it, if it really has a, a negative effect, you know, that they get negative side effects from it or not. It is an antiviral. And of course, um, there's, you know, some research pointing to the, um, idea that that fibro may have a, a underlying viral component so you know depending on which viruses it targets it's i guess it's possible it may even be helpful um but i'd be interested to hear other people's um experiences on that yeah i would too because um like i was telling donna earlier this morning um I've known people that have had Tamiflu and nearly all of them had said that they would rather have not done the Tamiflu because they felt like it really didn't help them. But also it seemed like it prolonged the whole, you know, not the fever, like the active symptoms of flu, but that fatigue that you have. They said they felt like it was really drawn out past that time and only half of those people have fibro. So it wasn't even like the people with fibro were having bad effects and the people not experiencing fibro were fine. It was like all of them. So I'm wondering how that works as well. Um, Carrie said that in regards to having a flu and fibro at the same time, she said it amplified her fibro symptoms and she was in a very dark place at that time. And unfortunately, that's what could happen. Um, Shelly Wood says, I'm not sure with colds, I haven't really paid attention, I guess, but with the stomach flu, it makes my fibro 10 times worse. It puts me down and it hurts to lay there or get up. It's awful. Um, I had the flu this time last year and like Shelly, it was just, it made my fibro so much worse. Like, but I wasn't just feeling the extreme fatigue when my flu like went into full force. Like everything was just, it was just amplified. I felt like I could hear so much better than when not. So all the sounds were hurting. Light hurt my eyes. I couldn't lie down. I couldn't get up. I, I was just like constantly like in the state of restlessness. It was just, it was horrible. Um, how is it? How are you with the flu, Donna? You know, honestly, I don't even know that I've ever had the flu. If I have, I've never... I'm sure I have at some point, but I'm one of those people that when I get colds, I very, very rarely go to the doctor. So I've never been diagnosed with it. Um, I mean, I'm sure I've had it, but, but, you know, my experience of having really bad colds is like I said, usually my symptoms dissipate. Um, it, they just kind of take a back seat and the cold takes the, the forefront. Um, you know, and it's, it's even been to the point where, like I said, I asked my doctor about it, you know, because is there, is there something that I can, that I can do when I'm well in order to feel that? I mean, it's, it, it was very strange. And again, I, I'm just chalking it up to maybe being a, um, some sort of immune system issue, you know, that the immune system is so busy fighting the cold that it's not, not, you know, fighting the inflammation and such in my body. So, um, but but the the cold itself when i have when i have colds or i guess flu like i said i don't know that that i've never been diagnosed with it um they are miserable they last forever um you know like uh, my husband and i uh he he generally is the one that that comes home and brings me a cold because i i don't like leave my house a, a ton so i'm not exposed to a lot of people um so i almost always get it from him and um, he generally will get over the same cold in about three or four days. Um, our last one, he, he was over it in three, four or five days. It took me two weeks. Wow. It was, it was miserable. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't leave my house that often either. It's all of my kids. Like right now with my nephew living with us for the last year, it's five kids. Five kids go out to the public school, get all those germs and bring it home. And there's guaranteed to be at least one of us sick because, I mean, it passes through all of them. And as soon as they start to get sick, that's when I start preparing myself 
just in case I'm sick. So when I'm going to the store for them to get the popsicles and the tea and soup and all that, I'm buying extra and kind of putting it off to the side just in case by chance I get sick. I'm not having to do all that stuff while I'm sick because it's just taking care of them when you're not feeling well is just, you know, everything else just falls to the wayside. Yeah, I mean, if you have kids, you're you're pretty much, you're, you're just, for lack of a better term, you're screwed. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> I mean, and thankfully, my kids are now at that age that when they know that I'm sick, I can tell them, hey, this is how I'm feeling. And, well, they know that they won't probably won't get any chores because I'm not going to go and make sure that it's done. Um, but they'll also step up to the plate and try to help as much as they can. So I'm thankful. My youngest is just, just turned six, so I don't have baby babies anymore so i mean bittersweet <laughs> yeah yeah so is there is there anything in particular that you you kind of do to try to avoid it as much as possible i mean with kids it's it's really really tough because i mean they're just basically little germ factories but, they really are. <laughs> but i mean is there any anything that you you try to do around this time of the year just to try to keep it at, at bay as much as you can well, you know, I'm glad you asked that because I'm kind of like that. I'm not a germaphobe, but I am a germaphobe. So I won't let the kids come and, you know, get on their beds or, you know, do anything with their school clothes on. I'm like, okay, you go outside and play. Once you come in, let's shower, or change into PJ. So I don't want it to be traipsed all over the place. But also a part of me is like they need to get exposed to those germs so they can get those mild sicknesses so they're not sick all the time you know, from, from the lack of being exposed to it. Um, but so what I do is I do elderberry, which mm -hmm. is a neighbor in the community makes it, it's like raw honey, elderberry is for something. And then they just mix it up. I don't know all the stuff that's in it. I just know it tastes awful. <laughs> um, and it's one of those things that you just have to acquire. Now my kids just take it and it's no big deal. But in the beginning it was just, it, they hated it. Um, but we just take that once a day. Um, and then, you know, I just run essential oils in the house is really, there's no way that you can avoid it. I mean, if they're going to be in school doing all that stuff, they're going to bring it home just when, if they seem like they're going to start getting sick or someone starts to report that it's going on, I'm like elderberry and just diffuse some oils. I mean, <laughs> that's all it can really do. Are there particular, Are there particular oils, oils that like you um, so on guard is, well, see, I don't, I know some blends, but I'm not with that company anymore. So I don't want to mention any of those blends. Um, I can't, other than that, like single ones, like I know peppermint is really good for headaches. Mm -hmm. Um, they have a blend for stomachs. It, it's different things amongst the oil companies, but it's mo mostly for the digestion. So you don't get like the nausea. Um, Orange is really good. Like the orange drops are really good for chronic pain, like the pain symptoms. Mm -hmm. so other than that, I just, I get really nervous when we start talking about essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh -huh. so Carrie is talking about how her husband helps out too. That's really good when you have a caregiver there that's able to help out with things. My husband just moved back home, so it's nice to have him, his help. Um, with everything, but when you don't have that help, it's, it can get really stressful too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, no, is that better? Let's see. No, I'm still getting a little bit up. No, it's good. It's good now. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the things that, that I do on my end is um, I'm constantly washing my hands and um, I know a lot of people aren't going to like this, but I also am a, am a hand sanitizer person. Um, but I try, um, because I've been transitioning from more conventional products to natural products, I've tried to find some um, of the uh, hand sanitizers that don't have some of the more abrasive ingredients and alcohol and that kind of thing. Um, one of the things that, ones that I like is, let me see if you can see that, is called EO and you're actually you're seeing the reverse of it I'm so sorry but it's um EO brand hand sanitizer in the peppermint I got that from um from Vitacost and you know I always kind of spray my hands down with that whenever like I'm out doing like grocery shopping or Walmart or anything like that 
Um, and then it kind of grossed people out the shopping carts. I read a study a few months back that showed that I believe it was like 97 or 98 percent of shopping carts. The handles have E. coli, which is <gasps> poop. Oh. <laughs> On the, so I always try to make sure to uh, to wipe down the, the shopping cart handles. Um, <laughs> for that that reminds me. Um, I remember a few years ago, like so, like five to six years ago, I remember seeing this article about how they don't effectively wipe down the tables in the fast food restaurants. Yeah. And so it was stuck in my head. And I remember the very next time I went to the fast food restaurant with my daughter, she was in a high chair. And so I wiped down the table with just a baby wipe and that I just did one quick wipe and it was almost completely darkened on the white wipe. It was, uh, it's so gross. And kids always eat off that table. Ugh. Yes. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. I used to, I used to work in fast food and, and we would always just take like a bucket with warm soapy water and, and a towel and wipe down. But I mean, you think about it, like the last couple tables when the, water is just funky nasty mm. i mean you're not you're not really getting those clean <laughs> no that's so gross <laughs> yeah and um so is there anything in particular that you do when you feel like you're getting sick i know you mentioned the elderberry is there anything else um like i said if i if my kids start to feel sick and it kind of applies for when i'm being sick and when i have a flare if i feel it coming on or i know a cold front's coming through um, I try to find things that I can keep next to my bedside that's easy for me to interact with my kids. Um, so, you know, I wrote an article about like tips to have. And one of the strongest things that I suggest is when you're actually sick is to keep everything right next to you within reach. Um, and then so the same thing goes for with my kids. Like I can keep a book. Or, you know, those little travel games in the dollar store that has the magnetic pieces so you can sit in bed and play. You know, I make sure I keep a list of the shows that I want to watch because I cannot remember them. Um, so, you know, I do that and I just make sure I have those things beforehand um, so I'm not crazy. Because, like, right now it's – I can't think straight. Like, I feel like I'm just – my ears feel really clogged, which is why I had the sound up because I can't – hear that well because my ears feel clogged mm -hmm. um I don't yeah so those are the few things that that I do just because I have kids it's a little bit different whereas if I didn't have the kids when they're not here during the day I don't care just like whatever I'm just gonna sleep all day <laughs> yeah yeah I tend to like when I when I'm just uh coming down with something I like to um try to start drinking some of those electrolyte drinks mm -hmm. um so and I did like bring this up so I could show you guys. And again, I don't, I'm not sure if this is going to come off backwards or not, but it's called, yeah, it's backwards. Sorry about that. Um, it's called electrolyte stamina power pack. Um, and basically this is sort of like, um, a cleaner version of emergency that you would find at Walmart. I get it off of, uh, Vitacost also get it off of, uh, Amazon, but it's just little packets. Um, it's full of vitamin C. Now it is ascorbic acid, and I know some people don't like to take a uh, ascorbic acid form of vitamin C. Uh, they like more of a whole food. So if you're one of those people, that's not going to probably be a good fit for you. But um, it's full of full of vitamin C and full of other like trace minerals and such. And um, also, just a quick quick hack: um, if you're having one of those days where you are like super super fatigued, where it feels like you know you're walking in quicksand kind of feeling. A lot of times if I drink a package or two of that power pack, it will lift it enough that I can move on and have a, a fairly reasonable day. So um, it's good stuff. I also use it after the sauna to try to replenish. So there's lots of uses for that. Um, it's not, not really that expensive. I think it's like $12 a box and let me see, you get 30 packs. So I mean, it's pretty, pretty inexpensive as those things go. Um, mm -hmm. Also, neti pot. Um, what is that? So um, this, this one's actually called a Yeti pot. Um, it's a, a cheap dollar store knockoff. But um, this is used for uh, nasal irrigation. So if you, a lot of people with allergies are probably familiar with these. Um, you basically put a little bit of uh, water with some salt and baking soda in it. And then you tilt <laughs> and the, the water goes up one nostril and comes out the, the second one. 
Um, but yeah, I, what I've read is uh, if you um, use this right as you're getting sick, it will um, help to actually flush some of the virus out of your nasal passages so that it doesn't last quite as long. Um, so I did not know that. I, I just recently did an article for another website on um, cold fighting remedies, and this was something that came up in my research. So I'm definitely going to try this. Um, you, can, you can buy the um, neti pots at like any drugstore. Um, I got this one from Dollar Tree, though, for like a dollar. Um, and then uh, you can also buy the, the pre-made packets to mix in the water, uh, also from the drugstore. Or I just make my own. You can um, type in neti pot solution DIY and it'll come up. You just add some baking soda and salt and stir it up. You do want to use distilled water, though. There have been um, a couple of cases where people just use their tap water and they, <laughs> they ended up with a uh, like a brain parasite kind of thing so oh wow use distilled <laughs> so, water <laughs> yes very important to use distilled water with that um another one was is ginger tea um that's just mm -hmm. very warming and soothing and you know you can get ginger tea pretty much at any grocery store um you know a lot of people say make your make your own fresh and it's it's very easy to do that but if you're coming down with a cold you're not going to feel like doing that so just grab the Grab the ginger lemon boxes at the grocery store. Um, well, I wanted to back up to what you were talking about for the sinuses. Yeah. Um, it reminded me that whenever my kids get sick, um, shortly after, if they're really congested, because my kids always get really congested, mm -hmm. if they're really congested and it does not clear up within a couple of days of them returning to school, then I know immediately that they're going to end up getting a sinus infection and strep throat because it always happens to my kids. All that fluid and congestion just sits right there and it drips into the back of their throats where it irritates it so much that it causes an infection and that's how they get strep throat. So that's, um, I'm glad that you mentioned that because it's good to know that you've got to keep this clear too. There's a lot of things that you can diffuse. I know peppermint is one of the things you can diffuse to help breathing a little bit easier. Um, Donna mentioned that pot, that little um, Yeti, what did you call it? Yeti pot? It's called the, the official name brand. The one that everybody is familiar with is called the Neti pot and with N, N E T I. So N is a Nancy. Neti okay. Yeah. yeah. So just keep those sinuses cleared. So it doesn't, doesn't prolong it. Yeah. And I keep reading really good things about echinacea too. Um, you know, my plan is I, when I was kind of working on this article, I decided I was going to basically go out and kind of go ahead and get the stuff to kind of have a kit on hand. And that's uh, one of the things that I'm going to add is echinacea. Supposedly, if you take, take echinacea right as you feel sick, that will, that will help um, reduce the, the time that it's, uh, that it's going to make you miserable. Um, another like home remedy my mom always did. I've never tried it, but she swore by it. She thought it was like one of the best things to do ever is um, she would just put uh, salt in uh, water and then gargle with it. And she swore that that, you know, would solve a sore throat every single time. Um, I'd be interested to see if other people have tried that because she was such a big fan of doing that. Um, when yeah, I was we had that growing up. It was every time we had a sore throat and we weren't feeling well. It was um, Theraflu that we had to drink. Ugh. Yeah, and then we had to um, gargle <laughs> the warm salt water. And the warm salt water, water didn't bother us. It didn't taste nasty. And it does soothe the throat. I get my kids to do it now. If they have a sore throat, um, they'll do it. And we'll do it as well. I really, I think it works. Yeah. And then um, tissues. Like I, I always buy the, um, the tissues with the lotion built in, even though they, they cost a lot more than the others because, you know, your nose gets so irritated you know even with the the ones with the lotion after a few days it's irritated but at least it kind of prolongs it so you know if you start start out with the with the tissues that feel like sandpaper mm. you're just making yourself miserable for, <laughs> for a longer period of time um you know sometimes i will do um take a cotton swab and put a little bit of petroleum jelly to put that up in the nostrils now, I know that's that's again probably not the not the best thing you know for people that are 
wanting to steer clear of petroleum products. Um, but I kind of look at it that when you're sick, sometimes you have to do some things that you don't want to do just because, <laughs> you know, the, the thing is though, just on second thought, you know, I bet coconut oil would work probably just as well, wouldn't it? Um, you know, for coating those nasal, nasal passages, it's a little bit to give some relief from them being, you know, dry and that Or even, um, um, chapstick. Cause I use chapstick that has, um, essential oils in it. It has peppermint. Yeah. Um, cause I do the same thing. No matter if I get the tissues that also have the lotion in it, I always get really raw. So I would just take my chapstick and I just put it right there on the parts that's raw because I mean, it does the same thing for the lips, keeps it nice and smooth. So I put it up there and that pep smelling that peppermint is, is really good too. Yeah. So I was, I was asking you about this before we went live. Um, we were asking each other, do we get the, do we get the flu shot? Mm -hmm. And I know that's kind of a controversial topic. Um, you know, and I think both neither one of us has, have ever really gotten it. I, I've never gotten it either. My, my husband is a big fan of it. He gets his every year. And, um, but I had done some reading up on the on this year's flu shot, and apparently, I, I saw two different numbers. One said that it was only about ten percent effective this year, and one said it was like around in the thirty percentile. So, they didn't do the best job in the world of <laughs> of making the flu shot this year for people. Um, no. Apparently, it's apparently it's it's not very effective. So, no, because um, I know that a lot of my kids friends were sick over the Christmas holiday and now they're sick again this week and it's a different strain. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the moms called me and was saying, and I was like, you know, didn't y'all just have the flu? And she said, yeah, well, this is the different strain that supposedly, you know, from what the pediatrician was saying that the flu strain that we had in December has mutated and is going back around and hitting kids again. And there's a lot of kids in my area that are experiencing the flu for the second time this year. I personally don't get the flu shot because, because it mutates and it changes all the time. I don't see the point of putting it in my body. Also, I'm not a hundred percent on all vaccines and that's one of the ones that I'm not um, for and I'm, I'm not against it, but I'm not, I'm definitely not for it. So that's why we don't get it in our family. Like our kids don't get it either. Yeah, I've just, I just never got it because I've never known that I had the flu. So it didn't seem like anything, you know, particularly prior to me getting um, fiber and Lyme, I was like super healthy, like I hardly ever got sick. So it just wasn't something that I was, that I felt like I needed. Yeah. Um, and now I, like some of the advice on the, on the flu shot, really, it just doesn't really make sense to me that like the populations that they recommend to get it. Um, are very similar to the ones that they recommend to get Tamiflu. You know, the kind of elderly people, very, very young people, pregnant people, people with compromised immune systems. And I don't know, just my, my common, common sense meter. <laughs> when I think about that, I'm like, well, how does that make, how does that make sense? You know, like for instance, I know my, my immune system is compromised due to Lyme and you're going to inject me with a virus that and my immune system is already compromised. So you're just adding to my load that I'm having to fight. So, you know, but again, it's mainly, it's just because I've never gotten it and never felt a need to get one. Um, but those are just kind of like some thoughts that I had had on it. Um, but I do know it's, it's, you know, controversial and I would never tell someone to not get it. it that's, it's always just a personal choice. It is. Yeah. It is. I've had the doctor ask me about some other vac vaccination for my kids. And I love our pediatrician because when I tell her, no, I don't feel comfortable at this time. And she'll say, okay, well, let me give you some additional information. And she'll start talking to me, but never does she make me feel like she's talking down to me or at me or that she's making a, a judgment call on why I'm not giving it. She just says, I want to make sure you have all the information. It's the same thing as what Donna said, you know, when you go and read all this information about the flu shot and, you know, try to use some common sense when you read it. Like sometimes I think medical, when they do these medical articles and stuff, I think sometimes they try to put so much thought into just how they're wording it. And when really you could just make it so much simpler and in terms that you can understand. And I think sometimes those, all that information can bombard someone and make them feel overwhelmed like they don't understand it. But 
you don't understand it, reach out to someone that does. So, you know, you can make a good call on it. Yeah, I did run up on something that was um, this this past week. I ran up on something that's a little that was a little bit disturbing to me. Um, I follow um, a page on Facebook called Sassy Holistics. And um, she she writes a lot about natural health and that kind of thing. And she had posted this link to a um, CDC presentation that they had done, you know, within their department. And it was related to the flu shot. And um, it it was basically their marketing plan for how they were going to market the flu shot and basically teaching, teaching people the right terminology and stuff to use that they were purposely, they were purposely building up the the flu epidemic to almost be worse than it was in order to oh, yeah. the flu shot. And um, I'll try what I'll try. I'll try to like dig that. <laughs> I'll try to dig that presentation out. It, it was a little, a little concerning, um, you know, but again, I, I try, I, I'm not educated. I haven't done enough research into that area to, to have a, a full opinion where I would say, yes, the, the government is, is pushing these onto people unfairly or anything like that. It, I'm just not to that point yet, but it, it was a little bit concerning to see, you know, how it was basically being marketing and pushed on the public. Um, you know, they were, they talked a lot about partnering with the media and, and, you know, using certain, certain terms within the media to make sure you got your point across of how bad it was. And yeah, as a little, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm not surprised by that at all because because people, you know, they doubt themselves. Like these companies that push things to us, you know, pharmaceutical companies or, you know, just things that we know that we want or we need to know about. Like I feel like it's served to us so blown up that and some people don't even know how to just sift through all the rubbish to get to the meat of it you know what are they really saying and i think they take advantage of us and kind of push us into this decision instead of you know we should be taking a seat and saying let's back up for a second let's think about this let's look it over and you know fully lay out all the options or whatever um, before we make a decision and they of course they're going to use social media to target us i mean (laughs) Like that's just how I feel about a lot of things is that they they did they know how to just manipulate us in the right way. Yeah, one of the things I think I'd like to research is I like to find out well who profits from the flu shot. You know, obviously there's going to be some pharmaceutical companies that are involved in that, and are they do they have ties to the CDC? I bet they do. I bet that's why. You know, because I know like from the for the there used to be the Lyme vaccine. And the uh, there were employees within the CDC that actually owned the patents on that vaccine, so there there was a reason that they were pushing it so hard, you know, because they were financially. My cat is like going crazy in the background. Sorry about that, but um, they were basically pushing pushing it because they financially benefited. It was the same thing also with the uh, with the line test. They have employees within the CDC that are hold the patents on those, so there's a financial interest for them to continue using those faulty tests. So I'm always looking for the, what's the story behind the story. There's a reason they're doing the things they're doing usually. So something to look into. Um, Yeah, I think that's, I think that's all kind of I had on, on my end for cold and flu. Um, Is there anything else that you Uh, had on your list? No, I went ahead in the comments. I, I posted my article that I have that I wrote for the fibromyalgia magazine about um, tips for surviving a cold as a fibromyalgia parent. Um, Thank you, Donna, for kind of guiding this today. I was telling Donna before the show, we're just going to have to go with it because I have no kind of outline or guide. (laughs) Because literally, I did not even try to get out of bed and attempt anything until like 10 minutes. Like right as you were asking for the link to get on here, I was just getting back into the bed. Um. So if there was anything else that you uh, that you as a viewer would like to know about or more information, just comment below. Donna and I monitor the video after it's been posted and go back through and reply to people. I'll go ahead and, and type this uh, video up into a post and put all the resources that Donna and I were talking about. We'll put it in there as well, and it'll be on the on my beingfibromom.com site on Friday morning. Um, was there anything else that you had, Donna? 
Yeah, I'll just uh, just to let people know that I'll I'll post uh, links to some of the um, things that we discussed um, during our Facebook Live, and um, if people have have other tips for how they manage cold and flu with uh, fibromyalgia, feel free to share them in the comments. That way, we can learn from each other. Yes, absolutely. And if you found any uh, this video of any part of it useful, please share it out to your friends and family um, so we can continue this talk of fibromyalgia and helping others. Um, everyone have a great week and feel, feel great. Feel better than me. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye Donna. Bye.